since 1440, when the Gutenberg Press was invented, we've never had more choices of media. We've never had more newspapers, never had more websites, podcasts, television stations. But amid this plenty, we've also never had so much doubt about media and lack of trust. I did a quick search the other day for tools for dealing with fake news, and I got 175 million results back. Right? And if I do it today, I bet you that number is going to be about 200 million. So the trust we have in media continues to fall as we have more and more choices. So on most days, most of us are this. Right? Meaning that we don't know what to believe, and we are upset about things we are reading, <laughs> and um, very frustrated about this fact. But I think there is an answer to this, and the answer has been in front of us for a while, and that is Wikimedia which is the foundation that runs Wikipedia, the free knowledge and information website that most of you know. I hope most of you have used at least once before or use it all the time. It's been around since 2001. There are about 40 million articles on Wikipedia uh, in 300 languages. They get about 18 billion page views a month. It's the fifth largest visited website. About a billion people come to it. Um, every day, and the reason why I think this is a possible answer for us in terms of media and lack of trust is, on any given day, there are 200,000 editors, which is, if you add up all the newsrooms in the world, they'll probably have fewer than that. 200,000 editors who are making 350 changes, either adding a story, editing it, or updating it, 350 changes a minute. So by the time I'm done talking, there are five to 7,000 updates or new articles on Wikipedia in the 10 minutes I'm going to be up here. Right? So it's a phenomenal resource for us. And most of the world still hasn't quite tapped it. There are about 3.9 billion people who are not even on the internet yet. So there's a huge opportunity for this kind of a resource, and it's free, by the way, to be able to be used to counter lack of trust and what we don't believe or believe in media. But there's a problem. Well, before I get to the problem, it's also been recognized by Facebook and YouTube. These days, if you go and click on a news story on Facebook, there's a little button that says, what's this? And they're pointing to the Wikipedia page about the author or about the news brand to kind of tell you a little bit more about it as an indicator of trust. So increasingly, everybody is realizing that Wikipedia could potentially be a good way to kind of figure out if something is true or not. But here's the problem with Wikipedia. Only about 13 to 16% of the 200,000 editors are women, which means only about 16% overall of the biographies that are on Wikipedia are of women. So clearly, it is not representative of humanity, which then begs the question, why should we trust something which is so disproportionately male? Right? Here are some examples. If anybody is here from Wales, you should give yourself a pat on the back because Welsh language is the only language where 50% of the profiles on Welsh Wikipedia are women and 50% are men. Everybody else, as you can see, English is around 16%. Most, a lot of European uh, countries are in the 10 to 20%. These are the top countries, by the way. And as you can see, Welsh is about 53%. And Spanish and Swedish and Norwegian are still pretty low. And here are the bottom countries. You're seeing Russian, Ukrainian, Greek. They're still in the single, sometimes in the 10% range of profiles of women. So it's not just a gender gap. Wikipedia also has an interesting problem of um, harassment. 38% of the people in a survey have said they've experienced some harassment on Wikipedia while they're editing. And 51% say they have witnessed harassment on there. These are the kind of things you hear. I mean, women particularly are familiar with this kind of harassment online. Pretty scary, right? These are trolls trying to kind of uh, go after women in particular. So why does this matter? It matters because half the people who have experienced harassment online, and particularly at Wikipedia, actually don't um, come back or decrease their participation. So this is a profound problem if you don't kind of solve it. And this is not just Wikipedia's problem. It happens all over the internet. 
Um, in the U.S., 73% of uh, adults have said that they've witnessed online harassment or have faced it. So it's a global problem for the Internet. But since we can't necessarily solve the Internet's problems, I can at least talk about what we are doing to solve the problem at Wikipedia. So we have a lot of work to do on it. And the question is, what can we do about it? And the answer is, I think we can all do something about it. And I'll give you a few examples and how you can also help with this. So a lot of effort is going into building or rebuilding, if you will, Wikipedia for inclusivity. This um, is an Italian librarian named Virginia. Um, she does a lot of stories on Wikipedia around art and culture, which Italy is well known for. If those of you who haven't, you should go check the Coco Chanel 5 uh, uh, perfume page on Wikipedia. She's the one behind it and has done a pretty amazing job about it. So trying to get more women to contribute has been a big kind of um, focus and effort in recent years at Wikipedia. There's a project called Women in Red, which is, uh, the hashtag is Women in Red, which makes a very, very conscious effort to get more profiles of women, to get more participation by women, has a lot of resources. You can check it out on Wikipedia itself or on Twitter. Uh, it's an amazing resource to get more um, women's profiles on there. Uh, there's a lot of details about what they do and how they can help uh, for those of you. I bet you in this audience there are a lot of you who think that you need to have a Wikipedia profile because of what you do, and chances are that many of you don't. Here's an opportunity to kind of try to see if uh, you, you can get that. Wikimedia, which is the foundation that runs Wikipedia, also does a lot of like camps. Um, every year they bring women to kind of talk about what can we do to help address the problem. The picture on the, um, on the right is a camp in uh, New York um, where women kind of are encouraged to do uh, more of editing and more of profiles. As I talked about, harassment is a real issue, so we put a lot of effort into uh, kind of creating safety and pr protecting the contributors, particularly women. Um, Wikimedia has a whole anti-harassment team that actually focuses on this issue quite a bit. We're using AI to really detect what could go wrong in having a conversation, talking about how conversations could fail, can they get toxic, and how do you intervene? So this is a good use of AI as well um, at the foundation. Um, projects like Art and Feminism, um, 22,000 pages have been created or improved by uh, you know, 4,000 women uh, particularly contributing to it. There's a project called Wiki Project for Women Scientists. Currently, they have 101 open requests for either somebody to translate a page that's in one language to another language or to suggest names of women scientists that need to be included. And again, something that all of you can potentially uh, contribute as well. The Wikigap project on International Women's Day, which is March 18th, we did this in 50 countries, uh, and it created and improved 2,000 articles in one single day on women. So again, these are efforts that are ongoing as well. It's not just women. We enlist a bunch of men. This is uh, Sadiq Khan, the mayor of London. Recently, this was last week, uh, they did a day-long um, ed editing session for talking about women behind the city of London and added a lot of profiles as well. So we need to kind of enlist a lot, lot of men in this process. Um, you might be surprised to know that Catherine, um, who's all of 36, I think, runs um, Wikimedia, which runs Wikipedia, the global organization. She's been really particularly focused on this issue of gender gap. Last year alone, uh, the foundation spent 300,000 on projects that have come from people like you, suggestions to improve gender gap and uh, diversity as well. Um, I just want, because Wikipedia is all about sourcing, I want to thank a bunch of people, but really it's all about you, right? Because as readers, as contributors, hopefully, as people who kind of give their time and money, uh, you can all make Wikipedia a lot better than uh, it already is, particularly for the gender gap issue. Uh, they have an amazing app. If you want to do, um, download it. Most people, again, don't know um, about it. Um, it's, I, I'm on the board of Wikimedia. That's why I'm kind of talking about it. It's a nonprofit, so uh, it's not my uh, day job. But it feels like we have an amazing resource that's free and available to all of us in our hands that can become a good source for us to kind of constantly verify and check what we're reading and kind of build some trust in um, all the issues we're doing. And finally, this is the kind of audience where 
you need to continue to give feedback um, to organizations like Wikipedia. If you find something, yesterday one of the speakers talked about this particular issue. If you find something that's off, or if you find somebody who's, whose name is not there, if you think Anne's profile should be on Wikipedia, you ought to be suggesting this to the organization as well. But more than anything else, um, keep doing this, because unless you keep speaking up, things, things don't um, change a lot in these kind of global organizations. The beauty of Wikipedia is it's all volunteers. There is really, um, uh, everybody gives their time for free and does it for free. But the challenge with that also is that trying to get them to do things uh, globally is sometimes a challenge, but you need to speak up um, and write to them and kind of talk about, uh, be on Twitter, or say if you find something particularly egregious, kind of s uh, speak up um, as well.